Yo, what up? It's Solar Loon. What? This is update video number two. Yeah, this is this is update video number two for uh, November 22nd. Uh, I just finished one for Master Plan, but this is the other project that I've been working on, uh, which is a 3D software renderer uh, written in Go uh, with Ebiton, um, which is kind of insane. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's I'm making a 3D software render because I want I I want to do uh, 3D PS1 style games in in and I want to use Go and I don't want to use Godot or Unity. I don't want to have to use them. I want to. I know that this is going to be way slower than Unity or Godot, but it's still fun to to kind of learn the the basics of of uh, you know 3D and and you know how it all works and stuff like that. Um, I've gotten a, a lot more comfortable with matrices as a result. I it, it's it's interesting. It's very fun. Um, even if this is going to be way slower than Unity or, or Godot, I still like to have the option of doing 3D uh, kind of more primitively. Um, so this is basically just a 3D framework. Uh, it, it's made to uh, allow you to load uh, 3D models and then put them in, in, in a scene and, and you know view them from a camera. So it's not going to be a full 3D game engine. It's leveraging Ebiton. So it will use that for or you can use that for uh, and, and this is a, a open source project, so you can get it on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description, but you can use uh, Ebiton for you know input, for image loading, for sound playing, all that kind of stuff. And so this is just going to be for like, you know, visually putting things on screen, maybe uh, checking, you know, ray casting or, or checking for collisions, that kind of stuff. Uh, so this isn't going to be isn't going to be a full 3D engine. Uh, it's leveraging Ebiton. Uh, so I know that the draw distance here is bad but that's because fog is in this demo and it's tied to draw distance so when you turn on fog it looks pretty good uh but yeah this looks very much like a playstation one uh like a ps1 <laughs> very very simple 3d you got vertex colors you got uh texturing uh and you got fog which you know when you combine it all it looks very uh very very playstation one uh, there's a, a couple different blend modes. There's uh, customizable fog colors, of course. Um, there's a depth texture, which is how we're getting fog at all. And this is uh, this is a, a software renderer. So this is uh, you know basically instead of using the GPU to uh, transform the vertices on uh, with uh, OpenGL or something like that or Vulkan, this is the CPU uh, transforming the vertices manually. So this is going to be way slower than using the GPU uh, directly and only for this process. But on the flip side, um, it's kind of uh, easier to do, in a sense. Like, it's not easier to do for the user or for me, the developer, but it's easier to do in terms of, like, it doesn't require a strong GPU to do it. So if you, for some, and, and, and even even that is kind of, like, not true because we're I'm using the GPU to render the depth texture for things like intersection tests. Uh, well, there's no real intersection test. We just discard uh, pixels if the depth is closer uh, for the object uh, for for the depth texture than for the object. So it's it's kind of weird um, my approach here. Uh, like triangles can't intersect for objects for for triangles within the same object but they can intersect between objects. Um, yeah, this is weird. It's a, it's a weird 3D uh, software renderer, but it's fun, it's it's cool, and it's kind of easy to use. That's why I think that kind of, that's kind of uh, one of the appeals uh, to, to this, is that I'm not making something like Godot where it has like a hugely complicated uh, API or something like that, or it's, well, not complicated, but it has a whole like ecosystem. It's a whole engine. You have to learn all this stuff in comparison, you know, you load a mesh and then you pop it in and you set the image and that's the, the texture and that's kind of it. Uh, the API is relatively simple. Uh, you have, uh, basically a node based scene graph. It's similar to Godo in that, uh, you have a root node and then you parent things to that root node to define your hierarchy and put them visually in the scene. Uh, you position them using uh, a function functions that exist on camera or cameras or or uh, models uh, or nodes, which are basically just kind of empty nodes and and cameras and models both have a node or or basically are nodes actually. Um, it, it, it's it's interesting. It's interesting. The design isn't too complicated, uh, but you see that we have basically some 
uh, camera stuff. And then we have, for example, you know, your children, your ch recursive children, uh, setting the local, uh, getting the local position scale and rotation and setting it, and then getting also the world uh, position scale and rotation and setting it. You got tags in case you want to identify nodes by tags instead of by name. Uh, tree to string shows basically the the layout of the node tree from that node, which is useful if you uh, want to kind of visual visualize it. For example, if we say g dot scene dot or if we print out g dot scene dot root tree to, uh, dot tree to, tree to string, we'll see here in the terminal um, basically a little. Oh, this is for a different a different uh, example. Hold on. This is goes here. There we go. Uh, so we'll see in this uh, little uh, printout where the the objects are. So we can see underneath the root, we have the a couple of planes, um, a few planes. So that's the ground plane, this triangle, uh, red uh, plane, you know, square. This uh, blue triangle, we have a cube here. We have another <laughs> plane, uh, or I guess that's the triangle. This is the other plane. This is the sphere, the Suzanne mesh. Here's the crates. Here's the the hallway. Um, and then we also have a camera and a light, uh, neither of which do anything because you have to make your camera yourself. Um, like uh, you just instantiate, instantiate the camera yourself because we have to know how big the camera needs to be in terms of width and height. But that's basically it. Um, you have, you know, near and far, uh, kind of. Near is like, it doesn't really do anything far, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I have near do anything because it it <laughs> it didn't sla it didn't quite work slash it didn't quite make sense. Most people don't want to put a, a really short near, a really far near rather. They would rather have the near be pretty close to the camera. So I just basically said, well, if it's behind the camera, discard the triangle. But otherwise, uh, like there is no near clipping, there's just far clipping. Um, yeah, so it's it's a little jank. I'm not gonna lie, it's jank, but it also works, and it's fun. The API is pretty simple. Um, I'm not in trying to insist on like a full game engine here or a full game framework. I'm just trying to do the 3D stuff. So if you wanna you know have your entire uh, you know update function be just one big function, like you know have fun go with God on that because like <laughs> there, I have no, you know, I'm not insisting on anything in terms of the design of it. I'm just trying to basically make it so that if you want to display something, move something, rotate something, uh, you know, Petra 3d will do it. That's the name of the project. If I forgot to say it. Um, but yeah, yeah, so far it's going pretty well. Um, there's a few examples that come with the GitHub uh, repository here. One of them is this cool little, uh, logo. But then also this render to texture example here where it's rendering the camera's result result to an image and then we just pop that onto the uh the screen there which is nice uh so yeah that's that's pretty cool that's pretty cool um excuse me also uh we have parenting we have parenting here which works pretty well as you would expect um so we have the spinning cube, that's the parent, and then we have this cube, which is the child. Uh, if we press P, it will parent the child to the spinning cube, um, or we can you know, toggle it with the same key. Uh, and then if we do, we can toggle invisib uh, toggle vis vis visibility on the parent, and that influences the child as well, kind of just showing the, the, node, the node graph layout here. Um, you can use the arrow keys to move the parent. If you detail, uh, Deparent or unparent the child from the parent. You know, obviously the parent moves by itself, and then you can reparent, which is cool. Uh, yeah, very nice. Uh, there's also a stress test, uh, which I won't show because that will look like trash on the video. I'm pretty sure, but you know what? Never mind. Let me give it a shot. Um, this is a simple stress test. I'm not gonna move the not gonna move the camera a lot because it's uh, it might make the video look like garbage. So this is uh. Basically, a lot of different triangle, a lot of different cubes being merged together into one cube's mesh uh, to reduce draw calls. So it's it's barely it's all kind of 60 FPS. It's it's like you know 50 ish, uh, and I think it, it will drop as we move around uh, because some of the the triangles are being clipped off in the distance. 
Uh, but this is not bad. This is 5,000 triangles um, being drawn, 10,000 triangles total, uh, and running at 60 FPS. So that's kind of similar to, uh, well, way more than than you would probably have in a in a uh, on a PS1 because PS1 handled 6,000, I think, triangles max, um, and that was. Uh, brain brain falling brain <laughs> that was basically uh like if i recall that was flat shaded that was i think it was flat just flat pi polygons flat triangles it was six thousand total and then three thousand for textured and then 1500 for textured and lit so uh, in comparison, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good to get 10,000 triangles uh, total, 5,000 viewed because, you know, back face calling, but 10,000 triangles total um, at 30 FPS roughly, which is, that's not bad. It's like uh, 3,000 triangles at 60 FPS, kind of stable, uh, or 5,000 triangles at 60 FPS stable with half of those being called out in this example because they're cubes. So, um, and you can turn off back face calling. So it's cool. It's fun. It's not going to be fast. You know, if you want fast, go go with Goto, go with Unity, go with Unreal. Uh, but if you want something that's like a PS, you know, a relatively simple PS1 renderer uh, for if you need rudimentary 3D or if you want to work with Go or if you want to, uh, if you want to work with Go and you don't want to go with Goto with Go, which I think it, that exists. Um, but yeah, like this is a cool, this is a cool little 3D software renderer. I look forward to seeing people with like 3D elements in their game with maybe like a 3D title screen or something. Or if someone wants to try making like Silent Hill, <laughs> like some like some kind of crazy like 3D, uh, you know, 3D game in this, I, give it a shot. We'll, let's see how it goes. Uh, there's no animations yet. I'm working on that uh, because unfortunately DAE export from Blender only supports uh, one animation. I didn't know that before I started working on this. Uh, so now I'm pivoting to support also GLTF, which I believe supports multiple animations. And so uh, once we get GLTF support in, which is pretty close, I think it, it actually might be working already. Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't do it. There we go. Uh, it's pretty close. It's working, I believe, pretty, pretty accurately. Um, yeah, that's pretty pretty accurate. Uh, once we get this in, then we'll get animations, or I'll try to get animations in, and then we'll we'll be golden. We'll kind of be making cool stuff. Um, yeah, and so this should be working properly. If we look at Blender, uh, we can see uh, here we got the root um, root node, and then under that we have the pyramid, which is this little shape. <laughs> it was a pyramid previously, but we have this little shape and then we got sphere and then we got, uh, you know, sphere underneath the pyramid as a child. And then we have the cube, uh, that is also under the root node. So this all is working, um, and it's working pretty well. So yeah, this has been fun. This has been cool. Uh, I've had fun making this and I would like to, uh, continue to make it and have 3d elements in my game. Uh, because, you know, sometimes you want to just like, you you want to have the uh, option to do 3D. You don't want to have to go with a 3D engine to do 3D. Sometimes you're just like, well, you know, I have a 2D game and I just want this one 3D thing in there. You know, uh, how can I do it? I'm making a game with Ebiton. You know, how can I make the, the moon be 3D? How can I make this background be 3D? You know, do I have to abandon my game or abandon the concept? of you know 3d in this context well why don't we make a th software renderer that basically allows you to just draw this thing in 3d that you know should be an option and so that's why i've been working on and it's going pretty well and i'm pretty excited about it i think it's a lot of fun uh and i think it's again it's going to be slow don't don't get it in your mind that it's going to be like insanely fast but the flip side is i think it's uh i think it's doable i think it should be doable uh to target at least at least computers. We'll see about mobile. Uh, I know web works. It's just slow, understandably. Um, so we'll see if we can get it to work with with computers, with like you know, desktop. Uh, I mean, it's working fine right now. But you know, if I can get it to be faster there, 
maybe mobile won't be off the table. We'll have to, I'll have to see. I got to do some tests, but it's uh, it's exciting. It's very exciting, and I'm excited to see how this uh, fares. If you want to try it out, feel free to give it a shot. Check out uh, the GitHub repository for it on, on GitHub. <laughs> I'll put a link in the description uh, that talks about it, or links to it, rather. Uh, and you can look it over and see what you think. Uh, it's been fun. It's been real. I'll catch you on the flip side next time. But uh, yeah, thank you very much. If you want to support development on Tetra 3D, uh, I have a Patreon uh, that I will link in the description as well as a uh, Steam and Itch page for Master Plan, which is my 3D, uh, 3D, my my graphical idea board software, uh, which is going pretty well. Check it out. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar, Solar Loon. I'll catch you guys on the flip side next time. See ya.